Hi everyone, my name is Victor Wu. I'm a product manager here at GitLab. And today I wanted to share with you within GitLab plan, what is our goals and what is our strategy to attain those goals, um, especially as we enter into the second quarter of 2019. And these are really bold goals and these and the strategy is, is gonna last several years. So um, this is gonna be quite interesting. So I'm gonna close this window so we can see more on my screen. And the agenda is pretty much on the left and I'll keep that open during the course of this video. And so I wanted to start off with talking about what are our goals uh, within GitLab Plan. And again, GitLab Plan is one of the stages in the GitLab DevOps lifecycle as we see it. And so the overarching goal of Plan is to have GitLab be the primary planning tool for successful medium and large enterprises of the future. And I'll get to what I mean by of the future in a second, and that's, that's very important and very much informs our strategy. But I wanted to mention how this aligns with the vision of GitLab as a whole, which is to allow everyone to collaborate on all digital content. Um, and of course, right now, GitLab is very focused on software delivery, focused on the DevOps industry as a whole. And so um, in the, the realm of delivering software, planning, collaboration, and figuring out what to build, getting feedback, and incorporating that into your features um, and your software cycles is, is very important. So that's why it applies to, uh, or GitLab plan applies to the GitLab vision very well. <clears throat> uh, setting the stage is I wanted to step back and look at our industry. And something that folks have been saying for a long time is that software is eating the world. And when Mark Andreessen uh, penned this, uh, it was all the way back in 2011, and he was predicting something that has uh, pretty much come true um, very much, and maybe even more so than he anticipated. And pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, what it is, is that companies, in particular medium to large enterprises, are increasingly becoming software uh, enabled, if, ne if not software driven. Uh, in fact, what, uh, what I argue and what, you know, it's not something that I invented, is what the industry is seeing, is that in three to five and even 10 years, uh, more and more businesses will become software enabled. In other words, as a business, your, your key offering, your key business will be powered by software. So you might not necessarily be in the software business per se, or you not, might not be inventing you know, technology, but you will be leveraging technology and in particular software so that you will be a, uh, differentiate against your competitors. And because of the nature of software and the cost and the benefits therein, um, the, the competitors who do not embrace this digital transformation will just not survive and they just won't be around. And so that's, that relates to what I just said previously. The, the successful businesses of the future by necessity will undergo a digital transformation. Those who do not undergo this transformation will inevitably fail. And so that's why as, as GitLab ourselves, we're focused on the customers of tomorrow because they'll be around and we'll be able to serve them and expand our business um, as a consequence. And this particular goal is, is great because we're, it's an expanding market in, this, in a nutshell, right? Because there's, you know, there's X number of businesses today that need to ship software. And in particular, a lot of these um, you know, Silicon Valley tech giants have taught us that in order to ship uh, software, there's, there's a certain number of practices you need to do. You know, folks have called it Agile DevOps in particular, or at least the latest iteration of it. And businesses, small and medium to large businesses are you know, following suit and taking the lessons learned there and incorporating uh, these best practices from these tech giants into their business and enabling them to survive uh, in the future, as I mentioned earlier. So that's why this particular goal makes sense for us as GitLab, because the market for companies that need software transformation is only going to grow in the next few years. So that's why we're focusing on the future, because as these companies come online, as these companies figure out that they need this transformation, we want to be already there. We want to be already having the tools and capabilities and functionality um, uh, so that when customers realize this, they can say, oh, GitLab is the default choice. We'll, we'll go with GitLab. And along the way, we're going to bring some of those customers along for the ride as we invent this future. And, but but that, that leads into our strategy, so I'll get into that in a second. 
So how are we going to focus um, on the future in this particular strategy? We're going to do three things. We're going to make big bets in the future. We're going to mitigate risks by taking our existing customers on a journey. And we're going to leverage our single application strategy, something that I think is, is, is very unique to GitLab. So one of the big bets on the uh, future um, is something what I like to call the plan, break, uh, plan, and replan cycle. Essentially, that's saying um, if you have plans, you, you essentially need to constantly break them. So if you look at a, a typical Gantt chart, such as the one you see on the screen, you might have a plan to say, you know, I'm going to ship you know, these set of features later on in the year. I have all these initiatives going on. But the moment you ship a feature, the moment you, 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 you wrap up an initiative, um, if you've designed your application well, if you've designed your business well, you should be able to get feedback from customers right away, maybe even some you know, indirect feedback from customers from the market as a whole. And you want that feedback as quickly as you can to inform your planning right away. So for example, that might mean you know, totally scrapping one of these initiatives. It could mean reordering something. It could mean deprioritizing something. It could mean reducing scope of one of these initiatives. Whatever it is, we need a cycle of plan, breaking that plan once you get the feedback, replanning, and then making that cycle over and over again. So that's the name of the game in Agile DevOps, um, and in particular what, you know, the, again, as I said, that the tech giants have already taught us and, and that we're applying um, these lessons learned to the small and medium, uh, medium and large enterprises, I'm sorry. And so with medium and large enterprises in particular, what's interesting is that they just have a lot of scope to deliver, right? And your typical product development, you know, two pizza style team, you can only ship so much in your, you know, two week sprint. Um, and so what, what we've been seeing from customers is that a typical enterprise will have multiple of these teams shipping software in parallel. Um, and, and these features and initiatives are coming together to serve a greater business strategy. So for example, if you're looking at this particular picture here, uh, one company could, you know, one team could be shipping this line, another team could be shipping this line, but together they, they come together for some greater strategy. So, so we need the tools to manage all that, right? So traditionally you have your agile planning tools, you have your scrum tools, you have your Kanban style, um, you know, boards and so on and so forth. And that's all great. And we have the inside GitLab, but really looking forward, we really need something beyond that. And we're calling that agile portfolio management. Um, as, a, as a, almost as a superset of project management. So with Agile Portfolio Management, it's really being able to, to um, scope out that work at a portfolio level and not just at the individual team level uh, and project level. And then um, when you have it at the portfolio level, that doesn't mean you have to slow down. It doesn't mean that just because it's at a higher abstraction, you have to go slower. Like as I just mentioned earlier, the plan, break, plan, replan cycle applies at all abstraction levels. It applies at the individual team level, so you're making decisions about what to ship in your team, but you're also making that um, uh, those decisions at the portfolio level and at the, you know, at the program level, whatever you want to call it in your particular business. So, so that's why we, we put the word agile in that sense, and because that's, that's what the industry is, is having us use in that particular case. Um, so, so one of those things is against this, this Gantt chart, uh, this roadmap view is, is something that it's very helpful. We already have in GitLab, but we're inventing in the future is being able to view um, that's that the breakdown structure, that work breakdown structure easily within GitLab. So you can see this um, hierarchical substructure that we've shipped, uh, you know, back in January, just over a month ago. And we're going to continue to iterate on that with some really awesome visualizations, bringing that roadmap view into the Epic itself. So that that's part of our big bet about doing uh, agile portfolio management, having that w work breakdown structure, having that portfolio visibility in order to ship amazing features uh, in your medium to large enterprises in order to support this cycle of plan, break plan, and replan. What's interesting is that this cycle only makes sense when you're going fast, right? If, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, this you still want this cycle at every abstraction level, and you still want this cycle to be very fast at very at, at every abstraction level, and, and and it's sort of e even you know self-explanatory and obvious why this is the case. Because if you're able to to ship business value to your customers at a high rate, you're able to get that feedback faster, and you're able to um, get to that that optimum 
what the, the user actually wants. So, so maybe you made a mistake and you shipped a feature that the customer really didn't like, but that's okay if you did it really quickly because you get that feedback right away and then you shift something else and it's, a, it's, it's better by 10% and the next time it's better by 15%. Eventually you get an optimum versus in a traditional, you know, maybe even a waterfall style framework, you spend, you know, a quarter, three months um, shipping a feature that you, you know, maybe uh, have done a lot of planning and user research in advance, um, but it wasn't good enough and you realized at the end that you shipped the wrong thing and essentially three months are down the drain. Um, with Agile Portfolio Management, with this cycle, you need to go fast and you need to go a lot faster in three months. You know, I, I use three months as, as a reference, but some industries, maybe three months is actually pretty fast. Um, but uh, I'm guessing in most industries, you really want to go faster than three, three months for a typical sprint and a delivery um, cycle. And so how are we going to do that in GitLab? So what, another big bet we're making is value stream management. And, and you might have heard of this, and, and it seems like, you know, very buzzwordy. And, and like, what does it do? Is it just another process? And to me, it's just a means to an end. It's just one amazing framework, I would say, that helps you achieve that high velocity as I mentioned earlier. And how it does that is that value stream management helps you as a process, as a framework, quantify that cycle time. And wh when I say cycle time, I mean the time it takes for you to ship software from when you uh, decided to, to, uh, uh, to, to ship a feature, how long did it take you to plan it, to design it, to, to write the code, to do QA, to have your business folks review it, to ship it out to customers, maybe you had to do some beta testing along the way. What is that end-to-end -end cycle time? How long did it take you? And the reason why Value Street Management puts a premium on quantifying that number is because that's the best number to quantify. It's not to quantify, you know, you know how much you know value you you accrue to your customer based on a particular industry standard or based on some arbitrary, you know analysis that you did, those are great and it's something that we might focus on within GitLab in the future. But right now we want to be laser focused on this time aspect because what Agile DevOps have told us is that if you can go fast, essentially you'll be forgiven because the product development cycle will tell you, oh, you made a small mistake, you missed a mark uh, from a product perspective, from a features perspective, it's okay because you went fast, you got that immediate feedback, you can quickly change course or, or tweak and iterate to where you want to go. So that's why we put a premium on this end-to-end -end cycle time. And so that's exactly um, what we're designing into GitLab. You can see from this particular view, you can see uh, from a value, man value stream management uh, process or framework, they, they often say that you need to, to document these things or have these things um, um, so, so how we've interpreted uh, at GitLab, at least right now, of a design of value stream management is, is putting the cycle time front and center in many of our, our UIs uh, to help uh, decision makers, stakeholders, people who can affect change in your process uh, and key sponsors, you know, whether that's, you know, a business leader, even your executive folks, see how you're performing. Um, because ultimately this number, 15.4 days in this particular um, uh, example is a direct a reflection of business value. A as I said earlier, it's as close as you can get, right? This number is super, super close to how you can um, reflect your business value that you're delivering to customers. And in fact, this number is, is important because it's objective and you can actually improve it. And within GitLab, our vision is we want to have you be able to qual quantify whether this number you know, has reduced by 5%, and that's great, you say over the course of a month. And then furthermore, what value stream management also you know, explains to us is it, it tells us you must, almost, you, you, you must also map the individual stages in your DevOps life cycle to, to quantify how it's contributing to this 15.4 days. That's the mapping part of value stream mapping. So in this particular case, you might have a development stage in your life cycle. You might have a code review stage. You might have a user acceptance, acceptance stage. And if your development cycle is really high, you might want to know why that is the case. If your um, review time is high or if your business uh, acceptance testing is high, 
you want to find out what's the case, why, why that's the case. So value stream mapping is a framework to help you identify which pieces of your DevOps lifecycle is the worst offender, say, in, in contributing to this end-to-end -end cycle time. And it helps you say, it helps you identify that and quickly pinpoint um, the problem. And so you can address it, whether that means you need to improve your process, you need to uh, improve your culture, you need to hire more folks, you need to invest more in technology, so on and so forth. So we believe at GitLab that that's exactly what is going to improve your business by providing this end-to-end um, -end cycle time, identifying the waste, as you can see here, identifying the waste and, and allowing you to optimize for that. So you can see in this particular case, there's more stages and you can see uh, how long you spent in that time. And for example, the lead time can quantify, you know, a, a waste time or, or you know, uh, how much time a particular initiative was stuck in a stage without active work. So that's one way to interpret lead time in this particular case, essentially the inefficiency of, a val of your value stream map. Again, this is another view how you could see that to really zoom in to the number. So, so that that's our big bet on, let me shrink this again, on our big bet, uh, uh, rounds out our big bet in, in our future focus strategy in, inside GitLab Plan. Really, it's about agile portfolio management, um, being able to, 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 to have a framework to capture all the work that you need, being able to quickly replan work as you need it, and being able to do that as quickly as possible quantify what quick means and even improve that over time. So that, that's part of our future focus strategy. Another part <clears throat> is mitigating risk. So because we're so focused on the future, we don't know if what we're inventing is the right thing. We don't know if these are the right features that we're building. And it's especially hard along the way because we might not have a lot of customers for these future looking features. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these uh, organizations that will need these features have not been invented yet or have not gone through this agile uh, DevOps transformation yet. So they might not be interested in using th these features right now. So, so there's a lot of risk there because we might be building something that people don't want in the future or we might not have a lot of adoption right now as it were. And so what can we do to mitigate that risk? And so what we've done is we've reached out to very strategic customers, and you can see on our, our, our customers page on, on GitLab, about.gitlab.com, and you know we have a lot of them, who we've worked closely with and identified and said, you know, you understand um, this DevOps future. You understand how the future of software is going to drive your businesses, whether you are a you know a technology company or not. And you, for example, you can see some of the logos here. They're not fundamentally technology companies, but they understand the future of DevOps. So we're working closely with customers. Uh, and if you're a customer watching this video, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or anybody at GitLab and let's have a chat and have you impact our features. And that's exactly how we're mitigating the risk. We're partnering with customers, working closely with them and asking them, is this the right thing? Is this what you would use, you know, maybe a month from now, two months from now? Is this what you need now? Do you really need this now? Or would you rather, you know, us partner together and work on a feature that you will just get be ready to use three months down the road? So we're re being really strategic in working with the right customers um, to mitigate that risk of us building the wrong thing and having our customers shape our roadmap because even though we're confident in this strategy and this vision, we might not get all the details right. And, and so we're mitigating that risk um, with, with in inviting customers to join us along the way. And then finally, an another strategy uh, point is we are leveraging our single application strategy. So at GitLab, or not, uh, or Git GitLab itself as a product is a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle. And so we're doing everything from planning to monitoring. So what that means is that some of our features or some of our areas will, will actually be a little bit more mature. And so that's great. And so in particular, um, a lot of our customers are coming to us for source code management or coming for us for continuous integration and continuous delivery. Um, so we're able to leverage that. We're able to bring in customers who need GitLab for source code management because it's, it's, it's you know, best in class. 
uh, has all the features and functionalities uh, that people need right now. It's fully integrated with the rest of GitLab. It has amazing design and it's just a great tool. So we're able to, to get those customers using GitLab right away. And because GitLab is a single application, the moment customers are using GitLab for source code management and CI, they already have these planning features that I've been talking about in the interface itself. It's not a separate plugin. It's not a separate feature suite. It's not something to, to turn on in the settings. Everything is already there in the user interface and you can use it right away. And so that's something very powerful that even though we're focused on the future in particular for GitLab plan, um, we can still leverage the fact that we're getting a lot of adoption of GitLab in this other, these other areas of GitLab, uh, in particular source code management and CI, and have them taste uh, GitLab plan, at least the future version, or the future features that we see that are important inside GitLab plan. So that really rounds out what I mean by the single application piece, and you can see from this screen uh, an example of a merge request, and you can see some very awesome features there. Um, so that, that wraps it up for the GitLab goal and strategy uh, video here. Uh, you can see the link uh, in the YouTube description below to our direction page for the plan area, and I encourage you to visit it uh, to learn more about this. And then there is indeed a write-up of pretty much everything that I've talked about here, and so you can read that in more detail. Thank you for watching.